RMBers, we got another great video for you today. We're going to talk about Clubrids, and we really hope that you guys had a great Christmas, so let's get into it. So we're going to show you guys the Clubrid projects that we have and uh, give you some updates. Some of them. Some of them, not all of them. And uh, we want to show you guys some cool stuff, so why don't we get into it? So what we have here <laughs> is one of the animals we produced this year. We'll, we'll get a B-roll. <laughs> this is a porphyraceous rat snake. Uh, this is a pul pulcher. Yeah, yeah, they're pulcher. Pulchros or pulcher, whatever you, people, doesn't, people call them both. I feel like I'm messing this up. No, you're doing great. These are porphyraceous rat snakes from, uh, they come from China, Vietnam, and a couple other places. I feel like they've been found in India. Didn't mm -hmm. I just? Anyway, this is a pulchra that we produced this year. We produced a lot of synctus as well this year, which is mm -hmm. pretty cool, and some rhino rat snakes. So like, we're really getting into this. Colubra thing. Yeah, old world rat snakes. So old world meaning a bunch of the Asian countries that um, are older than the U.S. I guess. I don't know why they call it old world. <laughs> to be honest. Well, the, the U.S. was the new world, right? They came I over guess. here and they discovered North America. Yeah. They rediscovered it. They rediscovered it after it had been discovered four times already. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. So, so poulter are really cool and we produced a bunch or polka and here now they're all jazzed up so like this one's usually really nice though mm -hmm. they like it if you go slower with them yep slow and very um thoughtful movements deliberate. so you're just yeah. deliberate yeah um this is hi our <laughs> male one of our male uh rhino rat snakes mm -hmm. this is Part of the first p pair we ever got. Mm -hmm. Boy, what is it? Six years old now? Oh yeah, Seven something like old? that. Yeah. Gorgeous animal. Awesome proboscis on the front. There. Mm -hmm. They hatch out gray, and they have a kind of a teal undertone, and then they grow into this green color. Very mm -hmm. beautiful animals. So part of that teal undertone, uh, we've seen some videos and some uh, pictures of people having some really, really teal rhino rat snakes. And we think it has to do with one of two things, um, the diet or the, uh, the UVB light that they use on them. Um, a lot of times with the UVB, you'll get a good teal coloring in the rhino rat snake, but it also can be UVB with the food that they're eating. Um, so getting that good uh, amount of vitamin D from their rodents that they're eating and things like that. Um, but, I, I hear the UVB is, is the way to go. So we're kind of making a plan to put these, all of our colubrids on UVB. Um, it's yep. just, it's a little ways down the road, you know, space and, and time. And instead of having them in drawers, we want to have them in actual, like little trams, 18 by 18, or whatever setups. These ones will have some branches and stuff in there because they do like to climb mm -hmm. all depending on the species we're putting in, but yeah. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. It's a beautiful animal. And the next one. And the next one. Here. Definitely gonna get a bit. Really? Yeah. There you go. This is a Japanese forest rat snake. Mm-hmm. This is a rare uh, old world rat snake. Very cool. Very uncommon in the hobby, I believe. Um, I saw there's three people in the U.S. That are working that on them? are actually producing them. We almost people, did. People have them. Yeah. Um, but not a lot of people are producing them. We produced one egg this year. Um, it went mold. It molded over on us. It, it was really just to see if the female was receptive. I put them together, so I didn't. I kind of didn't think she was going to go, so I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. Because they can double and triple clutch as well. All these colubrids can. Mm -hmm. So, but after that happened, I just 
started feeding her up really heavy so that we can have a good year next next season. Yep, yep. We're excited and it's tough because very few people have produced any eggs in the world with these in captivity. Um, so it was very a, a big accomplishment that we did produce anything. Um, and it just really sad that the egg molded over. But beautiful animal, fun species to work with, very inquisitive. Um, and the feeding is nuts on these. So when they come out of the egg, uh, it can go a year without eating, without eating ever, you know? So a whole year without their first meal. Um, it's just mind blowing. And uh, we're excited to be working with these guys. This is our male mandarin rat snake. Mm -hmm. Beautiful grays and yellows, bright yellows. Some of them can be very, very bright. So this one's from Vietnam, yeah? Yep, Vietnamese locality. They have lots of red inside mm -hmm. the triangles here. Oh man. They look so dope. These are like one of the snakes that I wanted to get into a long time ago. And uh, Ryan and I kind of were back and forth, back and forth. And we didn't really have any clue at the time. And I was like, man, I really want these. And then we just never did. Um, and then a few years ago, we started buying clue Actually, it's been, I guess, a long time ago we started buying clue And then we got these guys. Um, at, least just six, at least six years we've been doing clue I guess. Yeah, but so the man, this Mandarin we bought last year. Yeah. Yep. Like just a year ago. So we're starting to get more and more and, and this is just exciting. These things are beautiful. So if you guys want something cool to work with and have fun with, Old World Rat Snakes are, are a great, great time. We don't keep a, a, a huge collection of these. We mainly just like pairs um, for the time being, but we're thinking about kind of expanding that. We have three pairs of Rhino Rat Snakes and then mm -hmm. pretty much pretty much a pair of everything else but um maybe it's time to expand hire a clubbered guy <laughs> <laughs> so we can expand <laughs> takes a lot of work man oh man and this one has the reputation of being super bitey um but if you handle them nice and gentle like anything else we don't seem to see that so it's very cool this is a Molendorfi or hundred flower rat snake. Mm -hmm. They can grow to be like seven, seven and a half foot long. Like they're, yeah, they're not like crazy fat. Very long animals. Um, pretty sure they're all, would be arboreal too, mm -hmm. or at least semi. Yeah. Beautiful orange tails. Is this one het aberrant, right? Yeah, this is het aberrant. But these, basically, uh, it's a recessive trait that breaks up all this, like, big dotting and makes it, like, almost, like, dots everywhere. Mm -hmm. so they have uh, a good red head and a good red and orange tail, like, at the tip. But then in between, it's kind of greenish and uh, get some browns, you know, with the spots. But very cool animal. Um, we love working with all these. And this is one of the ones that I said I had to have. Uh, Ryan was apprehensive a little bit about it um, because of the size that they get and uh, you know a little bit of the bitiness but I'm not worried about any of that I'm worried about the amount of time <laughs> that it takes up I had a lot of animals to worry about here <laughs> but yeah because like I can I or you or anybody working with these can go slow and for the most part avoid any kind of drama with them as you can see Mm -hmm. This is like has a reputation for being bitey and flighty and yeah, super calm and yeah, no big deal. So now if I was in here whipping it around like a maniac because I had to go through a hundred bins of these, I'd probably have some blood on me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yep, so this is some of the side stuff that we got uh, happening here at R&B Reptiles. Yep. We haven't talked about these guys in a while. Yeah, many months. So we figured, hey. Might as well, yeah. So make sure you guys comment down below. Ask us some questions. We love learning and we love uh, sharing what we know about these animals. We have been keeping them now for a long time. We know how to, to breed them um, and how to get them eating, things like that. So if you guys have questions, make sure you comment down below. Hit that like button if you like this video uh, or if you like us now that we're back together and hanging out again. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel 
and go and watch Her Pals Rock. Uh, we just keep on having great guests on over and over and over again. Uh, if you guys are watching Her Pals Rock, comment down below and let me know if you're watching it on YouTube or if you're listening to it on one of the podcast uh, platforms like Spotify or Google Podcast or Pandora or something. Uh, so let us know. We like to hear that stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching and for uh, being a part of this. And we hope that you guys had a, a great holiday and you guys are getting ready for New Year. So, uh, man, we love these animals. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Christmas. It was Christmas. The heck? What? Is it not Christmas? It's going to post on Tuesday. Why, do you want me to say holiday? No. No. I'm just doing the Christmas. Christmas is like, Christmas. I know, it's in just a couple of days. It's ridiculous. Okay. Do you um, want to, what are we doing? We're going to explain the cloopers that we got. Big fun stuff. All right. So, yeah. Hmm. So we have some little pet projects we like going on. Uh, no, not like we got going on. What we got going on here? We're petting projects. Uh, we have our colubrids. No. What did you say? Why don't you do it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> See that wagging the tail? It's gonna give me all. Yeah. Mm-hmm.